In this video, we're going to explore the concept known as the mole and molar mass. This concept and the calculations and conversions that we discuss will be key to mastering if you want to be successful in this course. The reason for this is that chemistry is inherently a quantitative science. We deal with numbers, we deal with measurements. So with that in mind, we need something for a counting unit that enables us to think of molecules and atoms in amounts that would be realistic in chemical reactions. For that, we use what we call the mole. The technical definition of a mole is that one mole is the amount of a substance that contains as many particles as there are in 12.0 grams of carbon-12. This leads us to thinking of the mole as simply a counting unit for small things such as atoms, molecules, and ions. A mole of anything is simply equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. This is the same as saying one dozen of something equals 12 of that thing. It's the same exact concept. If I have one mole of anything, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. We discussed molecular mass earlier in the chapter as being the mass of one molecule of something in AMUs, atomic mass units. Remember that one atomic mass unit is equal to one twelfth the mass of carbon-12. We're going to expand that view now and think of molar mass. The molar mass of an atom or a compound is simply the mass of one mole of that atom or compound in grams. Earlier, we looked at atomic weight on the periodic table and defined it in terms of AMUs. Now, we're going to think in terms of molar mass quite often. For instance, carbon, we look up on the periodic table with a molar mass of 12.01. This means that there are 12.01 grams of carbon per every one mole of carbon. Similarly, we can calculate the molar mass of a compound by adding up the molar masses of all the elements in that compound. For instance, if we want to calculate the molar mass of water, we have two hydrogen atoms in there, so we have two times the molar mass of hydrogen, one oxygen atom times the molar mass of oxygen, and then we add those together. For a molar mass of 18.16, grams per mole. Here are just some molar masses of other compounds. I'd encourage you to add those up and make sure that you're able to get the right answers. You will note that in the case of hydrates, the molar mass of water is incorporated into the molar mass of that whole compound. In other words, the 170.5 listed here includes the molar mass of two water molecules. We can use this flowchart to see how to do many of the conversions that we will do using moles. We can see that if, for instance, we know the number of atoms or molecules, we can divide that by Avogadro's number, and that will give us a number of moles. Or, if we know the number of moles, and we want to calculate grams, we can multiply that by our molar mass in order to calculate grams. Maybe we have a situation in which we know the number of grams, and we want to calculate the number of atoms or molecules. Then we see that we can divide our grams by our molar mass to first get the number of moles, and then we can multiply the number of moles by Avogadro's number to get the number of atoms or molecules. I've also included molarity on this flowchart, which is a unit of concentration that we will use quite often. We are not talking about it yet, but it is coming up fairly soon, and so I include it here so you see how it is tied in with moles as well. This chart makes it very apparent that moles are the centerpiece for many of the calculations that we will be doing in this class. It is imperative that you master being able to do these conversions. 
converting back and forth between moles and grams and atoms are conversions that we are going to do multiple times in this course. You can either memorize the flowchart on the previous slide, or you can recognize that the conversions we've talked about so far are simply conversion factors that you can use in dimensional analysis. For instance, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, depending what you're working with, per one mole. That's a conversion factor that you can either write this way or one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And you can set the, the conversion up however you need depending on what you're looking for. Similarly, atomic mass. If we look in the example of iron, the atomic mass of iron 55.845 grams of iron per one mole of iron. Likewise, we can write one mole of iron contains 55.845 grams of iron. I would highly recommend getting used to doing conversions this way. It will make our lengthy calculations that we do later on much easier for you. Another thing I would recommend is being very careful, just like I was here, to include all units. You'll note that I wrote grams of iron and moles of iron in each case. If you get in that habit, it will make some of the longer dimensional analysis problems we do later a lot easier for you, as it will be easier to keep track of units. Here we see an example worked out for us. In this example, we're given mass and we're trying to convert to moles. So we know that we have 16.5 grams of carbon. Our molar mass of carbon is one mole per 12.01 grams. And so note that we've set it up like this. We're looking for moles and so that goes on top. Grams of carbon goes below. And so grams of carbon will cancel out. We do the math, 16.5 divided by 12.01, and we get 1.37 moles of carbon. Take note of the significant figures in this problem as well. There are four significant figures in our molar mass. However, our initial measurement contains three significant figures. This is a division problem, and so our final answer will also contain three significant figures because that is the least of any of our measurements. In our first example, we want to calculate how many atoms of gold there are in a bar with a mass of 12,400 grams. The first thing we have to do is recognize that we can't simply convert directly from grams to atoms. The first thing we're going to need to do is to convert over to moles. This will be very common in problems like this that we do. You will usually have to convert over to moles as your first step. And so here, we look on the periodic table, and we see that gold has an atomic weight of 196.9666 grams. And so we set that up as our conversion factor. Note how I have set things up. We started with grams of gold, that was on top. And so in our conversion factor, grams of gold is going to be down bottom, leaving me then with moles of gold up top if the calculation stopped right now. However, the calculation doesn't stop here. We want to actually calculate atoms of gold. And so next, we'll use Avogadro's number. And note that moles of gold is going to cancel out. And so now we take everything we had on top, 12,400 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, divide that by everything on bottom, plug in the math, and we get an answer of 3.79 times 10 to the 25th, and if we make note of how all of our units canceled out, 
we see that we are left with atoms of gold, which is exactly what we were looking for. Also, just as a quick note, you'll see that I set up my dimensional analysis a little bit differently than you might have seen so far. I typically set things up in this sort of box type formation like you see here. That's simply how I learned to do it and how I set things up usually. If you're more comfortable setting things up with how some of the examples have been that you've seen so far, for instance, if you set the first one up simply using multiplication like this, then that's perfectly fine. It doesn't make a difference either way. In this example, we want to calculate how many atoms of sodium there are in 6.78 grams of sodium oxide. It's useful here to recognize that we will have to convert to moles, and so we are going to need the molecular weight of sodium oxide. And so it's useful for us simply to calculate that first thing. So we look on the periodic table. We see that the molecular weight of sodium is 22.9898. And there are two sodium atoms in there. We have one oxygen atom times a molecular weight of 15.999. We've put that into our calculator and we get a molecular weight of sodium oxide of 61.979 per mole. Now we're ready to set up our conversion. We're starting with 6.78 grams of sodium oxide. Our first step is to convert that over to moles. We want grams down bottom. And so that cancels out. If we stop the calculation right now, we can see that what we would be left with is moles of sodium oxide. Now we have to note here that in our final answer, we are looking for atoms of sodium. So we have to look at our chemical formula and see that for every one mole of sodium oxide, we are actually going to have two moles of sodium. And so we have to take that into account in our calculation. And so for every one mole of sodium oxide, we actually have two moles of sodium. And so, if the calculation were to end right now, let's take note of what our units are. Grams of sodium oxide cancels out. Moles of sodium oxide cancels out. And we would be left with moles of sodium. And so now, to convert to atoms of sodium, we simply plug in Avogadro's number. And if we do out all the math of that, we come up with an answer of 1.32 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. In this last example, we want to calculate how many grams of glucose there are in 0 0.1654 moles of glucose. Similar to the last slide, it's useful for us to recognize that we are doing a gram and mole conversion Therefore, it might be helpful to simply calculate our molecular weight first thing. Our formula for glucose is C6H12O6. So we have six carbon atoms times the molecular mass of carbon. Twelve hydrogen atoms times the molecular mass of hydrogen. And six oxygen atoms times its molecular mass. Plug that all in and we get a molecular weight of glucose of 180.16 grams per mole. Now we're ready to set up our calculation. We're starting with 0 0.1654 moles of glucose. We want to convert over to grams. This time since we are calculating two grams, that will go on top. Moles on bottom. And again, if we're just looking at our units first, we can see that moles of glucose will cancel out. And we will be left with grams of glucose, which is what we're looking for. 
And so now we just multiply through and we get an answer of 29.80 grams of glucose. This is an important point that can't really be stressed enough. Remember that molar mass is just simply another conversion factor like other conversion factors that we've used. We will use it to convert back and forth between grams and moles, which is a calculation that we will do very, very often in the upcoming weeks. And so remember that, that it is simply a conversion factor. The molar mass of nitrogen is 14.007 grams per one mole of nitrogen. Depending on the calculation that I'm doing, it might be useful for me to set that up and express it as one mole of nitrogen contains 14.007 grams. Dimensional analysis is all about understanding what units you're looking for and how you want to set up your conversion factors in order to attain the desired result. So molar mass, again, is just another conversion factor like others that we've used. This just happens to be a very important conversion factor for us because gram and mole conversions might be the most common ones that we will encounter in this class. This will become an everyday calculation for us very soon. So I encourage you to be sure that you master it. If you have any questions, be sure to come see me, go see a tutor, or go to one of the past sessions.